Unit 5, FRQ, Part B. All right, so let's get busy on this guy. Got my arrow here on point. All right, this is good. Let F be twice di a twice differentiable function that uh, such that f prime of one equals zero. The second derivative of f is given by this for x values from negative one to three. Now this is a calculator problem. And so what I suggest on a calculator problem is that you put that function right into the y equals window because you know you're gonna use it. And then you, you do it slowly to make sure you do it right. Okay, now uh, the first question says, on what open intervals contained from negative one to three is the graph of f concave up? <clears throat> We know if a graph is concave up uh, based on its double derivative, okay? Uh, so we, we are given all this information up top. Now let's look at what its double derivative is. Uh, if the double derivative is positive, then we know that we are uh, concave up. So looking at the graph, uh, we got this nasty looking thing, um, but this is the standard window, negative 10 to 10, negative 10 to 10. And we only need to go from negative one to three. So I'm gonna change my window so that my x min is negative one, and then my max is three, and then take a look at my graph now. Okay, so this is f double prime. f double prime is positive wherever we are above the x axis. So it looks like we're concaving up between these two x intercepts and between this x intercept and uh, this would be three, because that's where we end. Okay, so we need to figure out what this x intercept is. So in order to do that, what we do is we hit second and then trace. Trace would give you the calc option. And then uh, we're, we want zeros. So we're gonna select two. Uh, and uh, what my calculator does is it has me find a left bound and then a right bound. So I just need to be to the left of the first x intercept and press enter. And then I gotta move this over to be on the right side of the x intercept, press enter. And then it says, where do you want me to guess? Okay, since there's only one zero there, I don't have to move this cursor over close to it, but sometimes you do if you have more than one x-intercept in the boundary that you chose. So I hit enter one more time and it looks like one of our zeros is 1.253. 1.253 right there. The other um, end of the interval is this x-intercept. So let's, um, let's find that really quick. So hit trace. I want the zero. Uh, my left bound is going to be right, I don't know, right here. It looks like I could have just pressed two because Let's see, let's just do that two. And there's my left bound. And then we gotta be a little more than two or a little more than uh, the x-intercept there. There's my right bound. And then go ahead and guess in there. And it gives me 2.171. So there you have it. There's my first interval where we are concave up. And the last one, we just need to know this x-intercept. So let's uh, do that. We'll go second, calc and zero. And I'm gonna put in 2.5 because it looks like that would work. 2.5 is my left bound, boom. And then my right bound, I can put three, I guess. Three, yeah, let's do that. Three, and then guess, and boom, 2.802. And then we go to three, so I don't need to find the other one because that's the end of our window. So we have 2.802. No, I said 2.803, oh well. Okay, and then it says give reason for your answer. So I'm just gonna state it, okay? Uh, these are the intervals where f of x is concave up because that is where f double prime is above the x-axis. Or you can just say where f double prime is positive. All right, so that one's done. Uh, B, does f have a relative minimum or a relative maximum or neither at x equals one? Well, at x equals one, we do have a critical value. So uh, what we would normally, actually not normally, what the first derivative test has us, has us do, it has us, uh, do something like a sign line graph. Now you can't use a sign line graph for justification on the college board exam, but you can use a sign line graph and explain it. And that would count as justification. Um, but we can't do this. We can't know if uh, F prime is positive or negative before one or positive and negative after one. So um, what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to use um, concavity. So we do know that it's either gonna be like this or it's gonna be like this. Uh, we're going to have a minimum or maximum. We could have neither, but that's a different scenario. Actually, let me think about that for a second. After I um, let's see, when would we have neither? Um, a neither would look like this. Hold on, I got to get purple. This would be the same color. All right. So at one, we go up and up. Okay. So there you have a critical value, but we have neither a max or a min right there. 
But notice what happens to the concavity at that point. The concavity changes from going down to going up. So um, if the concavity, if F double prime equals zero, then there's a good chance we have an inflection point there. And if there is, um, I mean, <laughs> we, we for sure have an inflection point here because uh, the concavity changes from down to up. And if there's an inflection point where we have a critical value, then you don't have a max or min, okay? Uh, but if we do have uh, concaving up, we know we're min. If we're concaving down, then we know we're max. So we look at F double prime and we, we ask ourselves, is F double prime positive or negative there? Okay, so let's see. Uh, or is it zero? So what we can do is we can hit quit, go to this, uh, the main window right here. And I can plug in a number. Let's see, let's use um, y sub one. So I'm gonna go to y vars. Cause that's where my function is, it's in y vars. And then uh, select y sub one. And then I'm gonna plug in one to see what I get. Boom. And I get a uh, negative 0 0.540. So we know it's not equal to zero. And we know that it's negative, that um, F double prime is negative. So I can write that out. Uh, F double prime is negative. Oh, I wrote over my stuff. Here, hold on, let me fix that. Okay, it's fixed. Okay, so F double prime of one equals negative 0 0.54. Now we could have also probably looked at the graph and looked at one right here and went, oh, look, it's negative down here. Um, so the F double prime is negative. That means we don't have to worry about um, it being um, a, a point of inflection, uh, but we do know that we're concaving down at this critical value. So that means we have a max. So that's what I'm gonna write out right here. Oops, looks like my writing is, I added this graph and it's messing up all my stuff. All right, so this is what I would say. Because F prime of one equals zero and F double prime is less than zero, F of one must be a relative maximum. All right, that question is done. Now we get to this crazy weird one right here. It says, use the mean value theorem on a closed interval from negative one to B, negative one to one to show that F prime of negative one cannot equal 2.5. Now this is really weird. I seriously, if I was doing this for the first time ever, like as me right now, a calculus teacher, I probably would have been stumped on this for a second and I would have skipped it. I would have come back to it. Now, it would be one that I would fumble through, but I would be able to figure out because I do know what the mean value theorem is. So let's start with that really fast. To have a mean value theorem, uh, the function must be continuous and differentiable in the interval that's given to you. So that's this interval right here. And this is uh, the A and this is the B. And this is what the mean value theorem says. It says that the average rate of change, that's a regular slope, equals an instantaneous rate of change between the A and the B. So this is the average rate of change. That's the average slope, or you can say it's the slope of the secant line. And this is the instantaneous rate of change, the slope of the tangent line. Let me give you guys a visual. Okay, so we have this graph F and uh, I have A and B right there and there's my curve. Okay, the secant line looks like that. Okay, um, and this is the slope of this guy. So here's our secant line intersecting the curve at two points. Now, the mean value theorem says that there's a C somewhere between A and B uh, that will give you an instantaneous rate of change that will equal the same slope as the average rate of change, okay? And so uh, you can see uh, this C right here, uh, it's kind of parallel. <laughs> my, my drawing is not perfect, sorry about that. But that's, that's the, this is the slope of that line right there. This is what the mean value theorem, yeah, the mean value theorem says, MVT, MVT. Kind of cool, you can use MVT when you're writing um, justification or reasons on uh, the exam because it's commonly known that that is the mean value theorem. So uh, that was a quick explanation on what the heck the mean value theorem is. Now let's try to use it, all right? Uh, now in order to use it, uh, now these, these are just functions, right? And this is supposed to be the derivative of that function. They could be F prime and F prime, and this could be F double prime. And that's actually what we're gonna need because we're talking about F prime. And we know what F double prime is. So that's what we're going to use in order to solve this problem. Okay, you might be lost, but hang with me. This is what I probably would have done. I probably would have just wrote this out because I know, okay, mean value theorem says this. It says, uh, if, I, if I plug in uh, one and negative one into the F primes and find their difference and then subtract the, a, the B and the A, that's supposed to equal, um, an F pr double prime at some value C. That's what I would have written. And then um, I would do some, a little bit of simplifying. Let's see, we got, we know that 
uh, f prime of one is zero. We know that f prime of negative one is 2.5 because that's what they're suggesting. So we're testing it out. And then we know that the, the, the delta x down here is two. Okay, so what, what the heck does this equal? There's no way I can find this out. Is there? Is there? See, like on our graph right here, we know, here, let's change our window. We only care about negative one to one. On our graph right here, we know where, oh man, I want to change my window again. Sorry, hold on a sec. I'm going to change my uh, y min to be just negative one and my y max to be one because I want that curve to come off the x-axis. There you go. Okay, so this is, uh, this is our f double prime. We know, this is negative one down here, the lowest that uh, this f double prime could be, and we know the highest that it can be. Uh, now, this says, let's see, so let's see what we can write knowing that we can know uh, that this guy this negative 2.5 divided by 2 has to be between two numbers in order for this to work uh, so we could try to figure out exactly what the max and what the min are of f double prime and then figure out what this number is whatever negative 2.5 divided by 2 is and see if it actually fits between those two numbers to see if this works so if we wanted to find out the max here you could use another tool we can go second calc we could find the maximum. So I'm going to hit three. Uh, and we have to pick a, a left bound and a right bound. So I'm going to go left bound, right bound. And I think it's zero. I probably don't have to do this, but be an exact here. Um, oh, yeah. It says negative 0 0.008 because it uses an algorithm for it and it rounded. So you can know that it's zero. Okay. So our maximum is zero. And let's find out our minimum here. Our minimum. Now I could do this minimum over here, this minimum over here. It looks like it's symmetrical, so it doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna say, this is my left bound. And then let's get over here to my right bound. Actually, I know that's one. So I'm just gonna select one right here. And then the minimum is the oh, negative 0 0.516, shoot. So this number has to be between zero and negative 0 0.561. Uh, for f prime of one to equal 2.5. And so when we plug a uh, negative 2.5 divided by two into our graphing calculator, see negative 2.5 divided by two, it looks like, boom, that's negative 1.25, which we know is not between those two numbers. Uh, this is actually smaller than this one. So this doesn't work. Boom, we proved it using math. Therefore, f prime, of negative one cannot equal 2.5. Oh, dang, that was a doozy right there. Let's do the last one. The last one's really easy. Okay, the last one only asks, um, does the graph of F have a point of inflection at X equals zero? And uh, if we look at zero on our graph, here's zero, uh, the F double prime stays negative on both sides. And so I can say no, because F double prime does not change sign at X equals zero. So you just have to know what the definition of an inflection point is. In order to have a point of inflection, the sign of F double prime has to change. Otherwise, you don't have a point of inflection.